Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Cohe, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and welcome back to my series on getting the most out of your 30-day free trial with Autodesk Inventor. All right, so the next thing that we're going to cover, and hopefully everybody uh, went through the homework assignments on creating uh, drawings and going through drawing styles, and maybe you got into some eyelashing basics, but definitely the content center. There's a, there's a quick tutorial that I want to introduce you to, uh, a modeling technique that I use quite a bit, and that's utilizing the frame generator. I personally think that the frame generator is one of the most robust pieces of functionality inside of Inventor that if you create any type of framing structure, you will definitely want to be able to take advantage of some of this functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start a new assembly file and I'm going to begin modeling up parts inside the context of the assembly. So like I said, everything that I'm going to do is going to be in the metric standard, so I'll go ahead and create a new standard millimeter dot IAM. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and create the first component here. And this first component, I'm going to go ahead and call this the frame layout. Now you'll notice that by creating a component within the context of an assembly, it's, it's, it's asking me, all right, so what template do you want to use? And right now it's defaulting to the standard IPT. As I mentioned at the outset, if I do that, my standard is going to be based upon the uh, inch unit of measurement. Well, I want to change that, so I'm going to go to metric here, and I'll say the standard millimeter dot IPT. All right, so what I'm going to sketch out is the overall footprint of this frame structure that I'm going to go ahead and model. And I'm going to model up, I don't know, a room, a conference room table. It seems to be rather top of mind. I'm using one right now. So let's just go ahead and, uh, and sketch this out. Now I want this thing to be, you know, as close to actual size as possible. So this is about, I don't know, one and a half meters. 1.5, I'll go ahead and type in M for meters rather than trying to do the math in my head because I was told there'd be no math. So this thing's about uh, one and a half meters wide by, uh, we'll just call it one meter. All right, so if I want to have the, um, and if I want to be able to utilize the, uh, the other planes, the YZ and the XZ planes uh, as part of the, you know, kind of the center of this, I'm going to position this rectangle relative to, uh, you know, the center point. So I'm going to go ahead and place a vertical constraint between the center point and its vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint between the center point and that right there. Go ahead and say done. Now I am centered around the center of my component. Fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and say finish sketch. So okay, I finished the sketch and now I need to go ahead and make an extrusion. Now why an extrusion, you ask? If I'm going to create a frame member, why wouldn't you just draw a stick frame? Um, because that would take more time than I care to as opposed to my other modeling technique that I like to employ. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose the extrude here because I want that Z value to be a surface. It can be a solid, but I prefer it to be a surface so I can see through it and everything because I don't really need the solid. So I'll go ahead and, and, uh, and say extrude. And rather than outputting a solid, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to output a surface. And the distance here is, um, I don't know, something original like one meter. And go ahead and choose OK. All right, so I've got my solid, which is basically the the footprint uh, of which that I'm going to build my, uh, my framing structure for uh, this nice sturdy table here. So um, I'm, I'm done sketching, I'm done building my part information. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I need to move up one level and that level is going to be uh, the assembly level. So as you can see right now I've got all the part information displayed to me. So what I need to do is I need to right click and choose finish edit to bring me all the way up to the assembly level. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this off and we'll call this uh, frame analysis. So it's going to save both the assembly file as well as the part file. So what I'm going to do next is go into the design tab of the assembly file. Now this design tab allows me to access the uh, bolted connection generator, uh, clevis pin generator, secure pin, cross pin, joint pin, I also have access to the shaft generator, the spur gear, worm gear, or bevel gear generator, bearings, V belts, synchronous belts, roller change, keys, disc cams. I would go on, um, but uh, I want to keep this short. What I'm getting at is if there's a standard component that you would normally flip through the machinist handbook, 
to get the actual specific dimensions of, uh, of say, a spur gear, for example, save yourself a little time. Utilize the, these design accelerators that are built into Inventor to build out the geometry for you. Okay? And you could call this um, the frame generator um, certainly one of those design accelerators. So let's go ahead and access the frame generator. Now the frame generator gives you access to all types of different standards. So um, ANSI, BSI, DIN, GHOST, uh, STN, UNI, so on and so on and so on. Uh, the one I'm going to access is the ISO standard. I'm going to go ahead and grab a, um, I don't know, let's just grab some square tubing here. It seems to be rather square, so let's grab some square tubing. And then what size do we want? Well, this uh, seems to be, I don't know, about 40 by 40, and we'll just call it uh, by two. Mild steel, that'll work for now. Maybe, uh, maybe I can flop back and forth between aluminum. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to utilize the, uh, um, the frame analysis tools to figure out if I can use aluminum rather than steel here a little bit later on, because you know, really the material at this stage in the design isn't necessarily that important. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, uh, and call it the placement here. And as you can see, I can just kind of click around and figure out where my components are going to be placed in the assembly. So I'll just left click here and there. Obviously I need a few around the top as well. So that is basically going to be my frame structure. I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. Now here I can go through and add a display name. I'm going to accept the defaults. Again, I'm going to trial period, so associating actual file names with part numbers and, and actual descriptions. Um, something you're going to address uh, once you get this thing fully deployed. Um, but let's just go ahead and build out the, um, the components. And let's add some end treatments to these. You can see that uh, you know, if I go to the View tab and change it from Visual Style to Shaded with Edges, you see a little bit more of the edges there, and, and, and they're not quite mitered up. So what I'm going to do is back on the Design tab, go ahead and take advantage of the miter function. And the miter tool couldn't be any easier to use whatsoever. You pick your two objects, right click, and choose Apply. It can't possibly be any easier than that. So let's just go ahead and rotate around, apply the miter to all four corners. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to trim the vertical beams here, the vertical frames. We need to trim those to length. So I'll just say one, two, three, and four. I'll need to trim to eh, this surface right here. Go ahead and choose Apply. And as you can see, they have now trimmed down. All right, so I've got a very simple frame structure here with very small lightweight elements. 